Hey everybody, welcome to Rick Vault. Today in front of us is the Jurassic Park T-Rex Rampage set. Set number 7593631120 pieces. And it actually sells for quite a bit, being $250 in the States, 250 euro or 220 pounds. This is essentially the ultimate collector series set uh, that we're getting for Jurassic Park. We did get one uh, other smaller set uh, not too long ago, also from Jurassic Park, that has some minifigs and uh, and another smaller scene. But you'll see that we have uh, the Ultimate Collector Series style sticker that goes along with the minifigure stand. Six minifigures included in total. And this massive, well above minifig scale, posable, buildable T-Rex. Uh, and also the iconic gates. Really, really, really interesting uh concept for a set i think they did an absolute excellent job when detailing this thing thank you to the lego group for sending this set over to us to do a review and we're going to get into the t-rex but first i would very much like to focus on the six figs starting in the order of figs that i like the most to the least we are uh, coming in with ian malcolm this is the second time we've gotten this figure though this is the iconic scene that has been immortalized and not just cinema uh, but outside of it with uh, with him sitting there with his shirt off. He's got the tourniquet around his leg, which is a new print. Also, of course, the uh, open shirt is a, is a new print as well. He's got two expressions. That's him being like, must drive faster, must drive faster. And that's him just in the, I don't know, making the face that I guess he's making in that particular scene. So uh, that's another Jeff Goldblum fig in the books for you. And it's a pretty good looking print all around. Uh, no one can deny that. I'm sure people are going to find some interesting uses for the print for the torso uh, as well along the way. The next up is John Hammond. I love that little gap that you get for the, the front teeth. Excellent expression there. Uh, here's, here's what his face looks like a little bit better. So you can see just uh, some of that white hair or sideburns kind of going up uh, towards the top. He's got a brick built version of his amber staff with the Mosquito on the inside though. There is no mosquito. There's no detailing for that It's just the amber staff and nothing else, but it still looks good definitely gets the point across uh, and actually looks Pretty effective here. Then we get Arnold Arnold hold on to your butts. This is Samuel Jackson's character. Honestly, he gets Very little screen time, but he is Samuel Jackson and uh, his character certainly fits in really really well with the dynamic scenes uh, within the control room. Um, there's also a little bit more of him in this set, I should say. Uh, I'll, I'll, you'll see what I mean about that. But uh, let's see, does he have an alternate expression? <gasps> yes, he does. This is probably what his face looked like right before the Raptors got to him. He's got dual molded legs. I like the Jurassic Park insignia on his lab coat, probably the best. Pretty darn good looking fig. And then we get Nedry, is that how you say his name? I think, yeah, Nedry. This is everybody's character that they love and hate, love to hate this guy. Uh, really kind of a, a good looking fig. They don't really do the, the, the chubby belly print too much, but he is a pretty uh, overweight guy in the movie. And he's got a, a relatively maniacal evil grin. And then uh, his comeuppance, probably the best print uh, one of the best prints that I think I've seen for, oh man, I want to get this print in another set so it's cheaper. This is hilarious. It's awesome. I would love to have a mechanic uh, ink splatter, like oil splatter on his face with a guy working on uh, a ship in the Yavin shipyard. And, and he accidentally messes up and gets some ink on his face. But of course, that's when the Dilophosaurus uh, sprays some poisonous ink on him. So good on ya. And then our last two figs are repeats, pretty much. Ellie Slater has the same prints as she did from the last time we saw her in the other set. This time her hair piece is a little bit different. It is more well kept because this is before the S really hits the fans, <laughs> so to speak. But uh, great, definitely the best part about her are the uh, dual molded legs there. You can see the little bit of flesh between those high boots and the shorts. So great, great, great printing. Really like this fig. Alan Grant is just less exciting all around. He's, uh, you know, it's definitely a good shirt print. Don't get me wrong. The detailing for the torso is great. It really does capture the character pretty well, but no printing for a belt on the legs. I feel like they were just kind of like, you know what? We don't really need to do khaki printing, do we? 
So why do we need to add even any printing for the belt? So they kind of went a little bit minimal on them. Makes sense. Uh, they did the same thing for Nedry. And he's got the, the piece though in his hand. That is the fossilized uh, raptor claw that he eventually throws away because he's kind of like, eh. You know, I got the real thing now. Anyways, great looking details for all of these figs. This is what they look like on the minifigure stand. We've got a little bit of detailing here, another little baby raptor, some more nice little jungle detailing around here, and the UCS sticker. So this is what the detailing of that sticker looks like. It's pretty darn good. It's got the T-Rex on there. It really is an amazing build. I'm gonna be getting into the T-Rex first before the gate, in fact, Let's do that right now. Now this is a model that uh, certainly, certainly uh, gains a lot of points with me and I think with everybody here in the studio once you see it in person. When we first saw the pictures, I think a lot of people's initial ideas were, hey, where is the Explorer? Oh man, you see how that tail whipped? Uh, where's the Explorer? Where's the Jeep? Uh, iconic stuff, blah, 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 blah. The fact is this is just such an awesome creation uh, that when you have it in front of you, you really understand why Lego put all their eggs in this giant T-Rex basket. So, uh, there's a lot of things to get through. This thing is super, super poseable. Really, really big, really, really heavy, really, really solid. Uh, but yeah, let's get through the poseable features. Now, the legs can move. Not only can they move from side to side, they've got a lot of friction and tension and there's some ratcheted stuff going on. And there's also a ball joint. It's a little bit loose almost. It feels loose. It's not really that loose. But what that does is it allows you to kind of have a wider stance for the T-Rex. Sorry, let me move that back. It allows you to have a wider stance for the T-Rex. And then when you kind of pick up the animal, uh, her legs come in a little bit. And then it's a little bit more of a, I guess, a neutral stance. But the wider one's definitely nicer to have. And you can lean the body all the way forward if you want all the way, you can even lift the head up more, a little bit, you can really get down there if you want. Like, look at that, that's a super, super dramatic angle, really well balanced still, you don't even have to, I suppose, worry about it, like the center of gravity is, a, is, is incredibly well thought out, and then you can go as far back, oops, <laughs> if you push the leg all the way, that can happen, which isn't a big deal, it just technics back in very, very quickly, but yeah, there is a little bit of, I guess, I suppose weakness. Oh wait, hold on. Let's see how far back that leg can go. There we go. The ankles broke, but there we go. The angle for them broke. That's a really, really dramatic angle as well. So it's really easy to move. The center of gravity is amazing. Not too much to worry about here. And then, like you saw earlier, even with the weight of the tail, you can even move it around like it's an organic thing. Look at that, that's so cool. Ah, I, I didn't even realize that you could do that until I was messing around with it right now. So sorry if I'm playing with it a little bit. I'm just, uh, I'm learning about the model as we go with you guys, even though I was playing around with it a bit earlier. So according to the designer video, uh, the, the guy who I think was in charge of really putting this thing together said that he pretty much kept the tail exactly how uh, Mike Saki, the Lego creator expert um, designer, originally built this. I think this is based on his original design. And then another guy from Jurassic World, working on the Jurassic World theme, uh, borrowed, or I think used most of what came from that older model. Oops, hit the camera. And then, boom, let's check out the posability of the head. Look at this. Comes all the way up, and the head can move along with it. Well, there's a ball joint there. No harm, no foul, did not mean to decapitate my T-Rex. There we go. Head pops right back on, and there's a bit of posability there. The reason why it's on a ball joint, oh my gosh. It does run into a little bit, whew, it does run into a little bit of, uh, I, guess, I guess the plates kind of bump into each other a little bit when you're playing around with it, but not too much. And also, I am kind of leaning over the table in order to reach all these pieces, and you can, I think play around a little bit easier if you're not, you know, extending your arms to the full extent just in order to reach this thing. But look, the jaw opens all the way up, the tongue can come out, the head can tilt. 
I mean, there's all kinds of dynamic and interesting poses that you can put the T-Rex in. In fact, I'd say this is about as poseable and dynamic as, you, as the creature itself in the movies could actually be, or in real life could actually be. The toes can also come out. Let me move these down here. The toes are built wonderfully. And I really like this detailing here because that kind of mimics some of that more raw looking skin that both chickens and birds have nowadays. Uh, and it kind of mimics um, just a little bit more of that detailing that I don't think pops out so much in the movies, but it kind of makes sense, I think, to be a little bit more accurate to how actually dinosaurs may have looked back then. Of course, we're not going with the feather design, but anyways, really, really an impressive build. And uh, I think I understand now why the designers just put so much of their effort and so many of the pieces of this massive set into the T-Rex and not focusing on the uh, on the Explorer or the Jeep. So anyways, really, really happy with the way she turned out. And let's get into the second half, really, second half of this build, which is the giant Jurassic Park Gates. Can I even get this whole thing in the shot? All right, so it's kind of hard to even get this thing uh, completely in the shot. It is such a massive creation. Uh, looks to be over minifig scale. In fact, I remember the designer saying that it was. Uh, it certainly is super wide. I mean, just looking down at the tracks, there are one, two, three, four. There, there are a lot of studs in between each other and the doors can open either inwards or outwards. I think they open inwards like this, right? They go in like this. I don't think they push forward out, but you can do either way, which is, which is nice. Uh, in general, the detailing here is awesome. I mean, the plate detailing that makes up uh, the, the wooden doors and the stone detailing that makes up these giant gates with the big fire pieces. Uh, it just looks awesome. The, the sticker printing makes sense. I don't think it would have made sense for them to try to brick build the letters, even at a larger scale. Uh, the, the, the iconic uh, font, letter font of Jurassic Park, I think was more important to have here. So that makes sense. Uh, from the front, this looks awesome. This is, uh, without a doubt, the side of the gate that you are going to be displaying if you end up putting this on a big old shelf for all of your friends to see or coworkers in the office. Uh, but if you do turn it back around, uh, there are some things in the back here which um, I don't think you're gonna be displaying just because this does not look as pretty from afar. I mean, just right off the bat, you, you can just see, I don't have to explain that to you. This isn't the side that will look cool from across the room. Uh, but if you do end up getting close to it, it is certainly worth turning it around and checking out the scenes, especially if you're really familiar with the film. So let's start with the top, I guess, and go down. So right here above the doors, you've got the scene where Grant, uh, Alan, uh, manages to find the eggs that are hatching. I love this piece. I don't know if that's a new mold. Is that a new mold? It looks kind of like a new mold. Maybe it isn't. Maybe that was a crown piece from maybe the, uh, maybe the Angry Birds line or something. I think that was a different piece though. I think this is new and that's nice. It's a little, it's a little dinosaur nest and that's when they figure out that the, you know, nature has found a way line from Ian Malcolm. So that's nice. Also, this is the function on getting the doors open and closed. Let me just point that out and let's start moving down from this section. This right. Oh, now this next scene, if you can see it, this is the mud coming down and slowly covering up the DNA, the uh, DNA that Nedry stole, but unfortunately for him, was not able to escape with. He got attacked by the Dilophosaurus, he crashed his car in the storm, he just, he, 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 he dropped the ball in this one, guys. They left a little handle there, so if you wanted to pose Nedry down there like this with the, with the stuff in his face, you can go for it. And let's move down right beneath that with the Jiggly Jello. So here is John Hammond. He is chowing down uh, I think reflecting on his life choices because this is the scene where they've lost power and the ice cream is gonna go off and he's kind of, uh, you know, he's he's treating himself and also drowning his sorrows in uh, sugar, sugar. He does this with Ellie too, so you could put Ellie in this seat. It would be nice if this was a little bigger and you could uh, have both of the characters in this scene, but I feel like this is more John's scene where he's kind of uh, realizing he's, He's pushed it too far. Some really nice little creations there. You can see a donut build, or sorry, a donut print, and uh, and some other nice little candy bits. 
But there we go, John gets his own little scene and moving down. This here is Ian Malcolm's scene. This is this is the scene where he's laying on the table and his shirt is open and there's that giant statue that was made of him for that event. So anyways, the, yeah, this is him kind of in the underground bunker. They have no power. And he is sitting around relatively useless. I don't even know if he does anything in the movie for the rest of the movie at this point. This is where his character is pretty much safe, but uh, nonetheless, it's a pretty iconic scene and the detailing around him is nice. You can see uh, a few details that kind of put him a little bit more in the universe. And then this is probably my favorite one of all. We move all the way across. Yes. So here's Ellie and this is Arnold's arm. That's right. They actually built Arnold's arm. Uh, and this is, oh, wait a second. I got that piece back in just as I thought I lost hope. Anyways, let's move her out of the way. Uh, this is his arm severed here, and you can see the trans red piece. That's right. Lego has made blood. Have they done blood? They've done blood, uh, I think, before in the past, but not for a very, very long time. I honestly can't remember uh, the last time they really went for something like that. So good on you guys, I guess. You know, this is a, an iconic part of the movie. It's probably one of the more ham-fisted jump scares. Uh, a little bit cheesier part of the movie to get that in there. I think I'm gonna have to do surgery to get that to actually pop back into place. But there you go, Arnold's arm. I can't believe they included that. Good job on you guys. And I don't mean to speak ill of the dead, uh, but yeah, anyways, this is Arnold's work desk. You don't have the graphic like you did from the other uh, set where you can see the uh, sticker that illuminates the virus from Nedry, but you do have this sticker that shows the island and some code and some some other stuff. Maybe that's the weather conditions. It kind of looks like maybe some satellite conditions. Anyways, good. I like these big old massive uh, monitors that they used to have back in the day. Arnold looks right at home there. And then this is kind of the funniest one. When you gotta go, you gotta go. This is the toilet where the lawyer meets his demise. Um, it kind of shows you where the designers' heads were at. I'm sure they wanted to fit more figures in, in this uh, set. The reality is the lawyer and the hunter are the last two that we, uh, that we should have gotten. I can't believe they didn't include the hunter. If they had a clever girl scene, whew, I would be, I'd be pretty stoked. But anyways, uh, there you go. It's just a toilet. You can even see a little bit of the bamboo or grass kind of walling that they used. But anyways, let's see if I can't turn this whole thing around and give you guys my final... Actually, you know what? Before I get to the final thoughts, uh, it's an interesting kind of build construction. These panels are attached by these uh, Technic, Technic arms, Technic uh, lift arms, and you can kind of push them out of the way. And I think they rest a little bit loose, but what, what it ultimately is uh, capable of happening is you get a really, really wonderful line. But when you move it around, this kind of comes out and this drops in a weird way. This hangs over. All you have to do is push that in place. This flap is slightly loose, but I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not really flimsy or anything. I just think it's kind of an interesting construction and approach to get what you got. Also, last detail I'm pointing out before final thoughts, really, really cool tire treads. I love that. That's really good. It's definitely above fig scale. Looks great though. And final thoughts. So here it is, the set together. Um, once it's built, once I've seen everything all in the same area, I realize now why LEGO decided that focusing on one gigantic T-Rex and calling it the T-Rex Rampage uh, made sense to them. That build is awesome. And in terms of seeing something in real life or handling something in real life, uh, this is so much cooler in person than I think uh, maybe is portrayed just by images and stuff. Just the ability to interact with it, the feel of it, the fact that the legs are both like loose, but they've got the tension in the right places and, this, and the stance feels so natural. The center of gravity is perfect. Like it's just such an easy model to move around. So poseable, massive, incredibly detailed. Can't say enough good things about the T-Rex. They really, 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 really did a good job on it. This looks good as a display piece, don't get me wrong. This is gonna be primarily a display piece. It's got the Ultimate Collector Series sticker and the whole shebang, so it makes sense. Um, the one thing is, I have a feeling, no matter how cool this build is, and this, this looks pretty darn good, and I do, like, I do appreciate the size. It really is oversized, and I like that. Uh, the one thing is, this doesn't come with a, an Explorer or a Jeep. People like both of those vehicles a lot. And if this is 
the last Jurassic Park tribute set that they're gonna do. It does feel a little bit like a missed opportunity, but go online, look at about a million and a half uh, Jurassic Park Jeep builds or Explorer builds, and I bet you by the time I'm done making this video, somebody has already built an Explorer or Jeep that match up perfectly with those treads. So who knows, maybe getting rid of those scenes and adding a minifig scale Explorer with the same amount of parts could have been cool. Maybe possible, I don't honestly know, but yeah, so that's gonna be a thing that I think people are gonna be feeling is lacking just because this is like a big tribute set, an Ultimate Collector Series set, so people wanna get those, 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 hit those check marks of iconic things that they love from the movie. They got pretty darn close. Uh, it would have been cool if they included the hunter and the lawyer. The T-Rex is awesome though. I understand why they stuck with this build. Uh, Lego at the end of the day is a creative company and they just were feeling the vibes of this dinosaur. And uh, now that we've got it in person, I gotta say, pleasantly surprised with uh, with the way this particular build turned out. So anyways, guys, that is, that's the set. Those are my thoughts. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this set in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault. Hey everybody, just wanted to pop in very quickly, let you guys know that we've got a Lego web store, www.brickvault.toys, where we sell the PDF step-by-step -step instructions for some incredibly awesome Lego mocks. I highly recommend you guys go check it out if you're interested in building something uh, a little bit more high quality, uh, way more detailed, and the revenue from the web store helps support us here at the channel, as well as the designers that build these awesome Lego creations. So anyways, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault.